Hey everybody, I'm here to explain, uh, even though it's in writing, what to do in the lab. So what you're going to do today is basically just work on the lab. Um, and I will uh, put into the subs lesson plan the data for this. But if you take out your lab sheet right now and you go to the first page, that's page three, remember the packet, the lab packet, um, where we had the potato, the sucrose bags and all that stuff. I gave you that big packet. I uh, do not do anything with page three or four. Do not do anything with page five or six. We've already done that. You should be done with that already. I uh, do not do any, do not answer the questions on page seven. You'll need to read pages eight and nine. Okay, you'll need to read through pages 8 and 9. You might not understand it all, but it will be your reference for later. And sorry, the top of page 10. So read 8, 9, and the top of page 10. Uh, the rest of that procedure on page 10 we already did with the potato cubes. We changed it and did potato cubes. Then the problem in your packet is that uh, the paper's got uh, copied wrong by me, which is fantastic. So the next page is probably 15. So if you flip that, then the next page is page 11 uh, on the right. And that has the potato core data page. You don't have to do that. We've already done that. That's going to be your CER, remember. Page 12, you need to do this graph. Now I'm going to show you the graph. So here's our data here that we did and here's our graph that we made and what I put on this graph is a trend line and you see that the trend line crosses the x-axis at a point about here if you drop that down it's about 0.23 Now, if you read the stuff on water potential, this will help. But what this tells us here is that this is the point, based on our data, at which the potato, the point at which water doesn't eat, that water nut doesn't leave or enter the potato, just like in the, when we put the fresh water bag into fresh water, the point at which the net movement of water is zero. This would be the molarity of the potato. And if you don't really understand that, we can talk about that on Thursday. So the molarity of the potato for any of your data and constant and other things is 0.23 for our class, which you will need for the calculations on pages 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, I'm sorry, 15 and 16. And then page 17 and 18, page 17 and 18, whoops, sorry about that, are the part of the lab, our lab part E, about onion. And all you're going to do for that, if you get that far, is you're going to watch the video of onion plasmolysis and then answer the questions. Okay, so we're not actually going to do party. E. Okay, we're going to watch the video for party. E. Okay. Uh, this part about making the labeled BME chart for each part, if this is what we did earlier when we did lab part A and I had the bag and I drew what was inside and what was outside. It's a beginning, middle, end chart. The middle chart would have arrows showing the movement of particles. So what you're going to do in your notebook if you get this far, and you probably won't today, is you're going to do it for each of these things. Okay, so what D means is you would do a BME chart for the potato in the opposite molarity of yours. So, for example, if your potato gained mass 
the second BME chart would your be, be your potato losing mass in a different molarity of water. Okay, and then if you get this far, uh, part E, the onion. Okay, uh, I will be around to help. Uh, the biggest thing to remember always is that water moves from high potential to low potential. So your whole task today is going to be to be working on these labs, their data, and, and figuring out the lab and stuff on water potential. Have a great day.